Hello and welcome to our lesson on the tangent and velocity problems. This is going to be from section 2.1 in our calculus text. Let's get started. What I'd like to do to begin with is tell you what our goal is and then the problems that we have to overcome to achieve that goal. In this lesson, we're concerned with, first of all, finding the line that is tangent to a curve at a particular point. And so what I have here is I have the graph of f of x equals x squared drawn. And the point that I'm concerned with is the point 1 comma 1. Now we know that that point is on the graph because if you plug in a 1 into the function, you get out a 1. So that gives us the ordered pair 1, 1. The goal here is to find the equation of the tangent line. And to boil it down, if you want to find a line, you need two quantities. You need a point on the line, and you also need the slope of the line. If you have a point and the slope, you can use the point-slope form to get the equation of the line. Now, we do have a point. Our issue comes in with finding the slope. Now, in order to get the slope, we know that the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Notice that the slope formula requires that you know two points on the line. However, a tangent line, by definition, has only one point on the line that coincides with the curve or the function. So we don't actually know two points for this particular line. And if I could sketch that in real quick with my ruler here. If you notice, the line that we're concerned with is only going to touch at the point 1, 1. We don't know another point on the line, and we need that in order to find the slope of the line. So here you can see the problem is, how do we get the slope of this line if I only know one point on the line? And that's where the idea of closeness comes in. So in order to get this answer, we're going to look at secant lines and see what happens as the secant line approaches the tangent line. So by definition, a secant line is a line that intersects a curve more than once. Remember, the tangent line intersects the curve only once. So if we could, again, pull up the ruler and look at what we're again, trying to achieve our tangent line is going to look something like this. It's going to touch at the point 1, 1 and no other point on the curve. And so what we're going to do is we're going to consider this point A that I have labeled up here, A right here at the top, and we're going to use our ruler again to connect that point with our point on the line. And what I want you to notice is that that red line, that secant line that connects with point A and our point 1, 1 is fairly close to the same slope as the slope of our tangent line, which is the blue line. So point A is actually the ordered pair 2 comma 4. And if you're wondering how did I get that, well, you can see that A is lined up with 2 on the x-axis. And if I plug in a 2 into my function, 2 squared is 4 gives me the point on that curve. And if we wanted to, we could use the slope formula to find the slope of that secant line, and that would give us an approximation for the slope of the tangent line. Using our formula for the slope of a line, we can plug in 
I'm going to say that my point A is my second X and my second Y. And the ordered pair 1, 1, the other point on the line would be my first point. That's going to give us 4 minus mm -hmm. 1 over 2 minus 1, which is going to give us 3 over 1, which is 3. And that would be the slope of the red line, the slope of the secant line. Now, again, remember our goal here is to find the slope of the blue line, the slope of the tangent. And 3 is going to be a pretty good approximation, but I think we can do better. What I want to do is I want to look at as the point A gets closer to 1, that line, that red line, the, the secant line, is going to get closer and closer and closer to the slope of the blue line. So let's redraw that and look at another point closer to 1, 1. All right, so what I've done here is I've created a table so that we can keep track of the slope of the secant lines as we pick points closer and closer and closer to our point 1, 1. So when our point A was 2, 4, the slope of that secant line was 3. What I want to do next is I want to pick an X coordinate closer to 1 than 2. So we could say maybe X is 1 and a half. 1 1.5 is closer to 1 than 2. And then I need to calculate the Y that goes with that. Now the way we get that again is we plug into our function. We're going to have to do 1.5 squared. And 1.5 squared is 2.25. That's going to be my X2, Y2 because my x1, y1 is always the point that I'm concerned with, in this case, 1, 1. So plugging into the slope formula, we're going to have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And whatever that slope is, is going to be the slope of the secant line and it should give us an even better approximation of the slope of our tangent line. So using my Casio, just to make sure that I don't screw something up here, we've got 2.25 minus 1 over 1.5 minus 1. And using the SD button to give us an approximation, that's going to give us 2.5 for the slope of our secant line. So, again, keeping track with the ordered pair 1.5, 2.25, we get a slope of 2.5. And again, if I could sketch that on my graph here, the point 1.5, 2.25 would be right about here. And connecting those dots with our handy dandy ruler, I want you to notice that that line is a better approximation of the slope of our tangent line. And so we're going to keep doing this, I don't know, for another one or two more times to see if we can figure out what this slope is approaching. So for our next x, again, we need to get even closer to 1 than 1 and a half. How about 1.1? 1. 1.1 .1. 1 .1 is really close to 1, still a little bit bigger than 1. And to get the y that corresponds to that, I'm going to use my Casio because we would have to plug that into the function and know what 1.1 squared is. As a decimal, that is 1.21. So notice in my formula here, I have simply erased the x2, y2. And this is our template that we can repeatedly plug values into to calculate multiple slopes. So here, y2 would be 1.21. x1 is 1.1. And then again, using the Casio, 
we can calculate the slope of this secant line, 1.21 minus 1, 1.1 minus 1, and as a decimal is 2.1. So for the ordered pair, 1.1, 1.21 on our graph, that slope was 2.1. Now looking at these going down, these ordered pairs are approaching 1. We're coming in this direction towards 1. Can you see what those slopes appear to be approaching? If not, we'll do one more calculation. Okay, so again, to get a better approximation, we need to keep picking x's closer to 1. And closer than 1.1 might be 1.1. Oh, one. I mean, if you think money, 1.1 is a dollar and 10 cents. 1.01 is a dollar and one cent. That's even closer to just a dollar. And then plugging that in to our function, 1.01 squared gives us the y coordinate for that ordered pair. And let me make a note 1.01, 1.02. 201. So here our y2 is 1.0201 and our x2 is 1.01. One more time with the Casio 1.0201 minus 1, 1.01 minus 1. 2.01 for our slope. Now it should be pretty clear what that slope is approaching. If we keep picking X's closer and closer to one, it looks like our slope is approaching a slope of two. And so here the whole idea of this lesson is the idea of closeness. If you need a value that's unobtainable, here we needed the slope of the tangent, which we needed two points to find the slope, but it touches at only one point. What we can do is look at the slope of secant lines as they get closer and closer and closer to the actual tangent line. As the x's get close to our specific x, the slopes will approach our specific slope. And so the idea of closeness as x approaches a certain value is the concept of this lesson. Now to help drive this point home, I've actually come up with this Desmos demonstration to try to give you a better visual representation of what we just discussed. So here, if I open this folder, you can see that we have the function f of x equals x squared graphed. This is our parabola. Again, the point uh, that we were concerned with is 1, 1. And then I have this other point that is a variable point that we can actually pick and slide closer and closer and closer to 1, 1. And we can look and see what's going to happen to the slopes of the secant lines as this point approaches our point. So in this folder, I have the formula for the slope of the line from 1, 1 to whatever A is. You can see that when A is at 2, the slope is 3. So if I bring A closer to the point one one, you can see right here how the slope is changing. Watch, as A gets closer to one one, do you see that the slope is approaching two? Now when I get to one, it's actually undefined. Now the reason for it being undefined is based on this formula, A is now one. 1 minus 1 is 0, and we know division by 0 is undefined. So again, that's the reason that we need this idea of closeness, because you can't calculate the slope at a single point. And even on the other side, if A gets closer and closer, you can see that the slope 
increases and is still approaching a slope of two. What I've done now is I've turned on the line from A to one one. And do you see as I drag A closer to that point that the line is actually changing and it is becoming closer and closer and closer to the actual tangent line. Now again, when I get to the point one one, it disappears because you can't have an undefined slope. But making it go smaller than one gives us a line with even narrower slope. So we have less slope here and more slope here. But as A approaches that point one one, the slope of this line and the actual line itself here approaches the tangent line. So now what I want to do is I want to use Desmos to see if we can actually construct the tangent line and verify that it is correct. All right, here we go. Remember I said that as A gets closer to the point one one, the slope approaches two. Earlier in the lesson, I said if you know a point and the slope, you can use the point-slope form to write the equation of the line. Now, the point-slope form is y minus y1. Remember, our point of concern is the point 1, 1. So our y1 would be 1 equals m, which we predict is going to be 2 based on the idea of closeness, parentheses x minus x1, which would be the x-coordinate of our point in question, which is 1. And if we hit enter, this teal, this greenish-blue colored line, would represent the tangent line. And I can click and zoom in on that if you want. See, as, as A moves closer and closer to 1, can you see that the purple line approaches the other line and eventually coincides with it? So what we've just done is we've used secant lines getting closer and closer and closer to our point of concern, predicting the slope, which enables us to write the equation of the tangent line at that point. Man, I hope that helps you understand the idea we're trying to get across here. The idea that as A gets close to our point, the line containing the point 1, 1, and A approaches the tangent line at 1, 1. Or in other words, the slope of the secant as A approaches our point gets close to the slope of the tangent at the point. The second part of our lesson has to do with the velocity problem. So here I have some statements. It says that the average velocity is represented by the change in distance divided by the change in time. Again, the average velocity would be represented by the slope of the secant line. And the instantaneous velocity represents the slope of the tangent line. So this is a very similar problem to what we just talked about. So what I've got is I've got a graph that represents the path of a rock being thrown off of a cliff or something that's 50 feet high. The x-axis would be time measured in seconds, and the y-axis represents the height which is going to be measured in meters. So here you can see at the very beginning, the rock or the projectile starts at a height of 50 meters, and it appears to be thrown in an upward direction where it's going to reach its maximum height here, which it appears to be after about half of a second, 0.5 seconds, and then it's going to start heading down. So what we can do is we can find the average velocity over certain intervals and then use that information to find or to estimate the instantaneous velocity of the slope at a particular point in the projectile's path. One of the main things I want you to notice here is that the average velocity is basically the slope formula. 
So the change in distance, the height is the distance, is going to be the change in the y's. So you could say y1 minus y2, or you could say y2 minus y1. I don't know if you knew that you could reverse those as long as the denominator is in the same order. So here the x-axis is time, and the change in time would be the second x minus the first x. So the average velocity is just going to be the slope formula. So one of the things we could do is we could find the average velocity over the first interval from zero seconds to half of a second. And then we could look at the average velocity over each consecutive interval. I think we should do that and maybe make a table and look at the slopes or the average velocities and see how they change. Okay, so here I've constructed my table with the points on the graph. Uh, I want you to notice that the slope is going to represent our average velocity, and the lines here indicate that this first little group here, this guy right here, is going to be the average velocity for the first two points, and then the next slope would be the average velocity from the next two points. So that's the way the table is going to line up, and what we need to do is bring up our handy-dandy calculator so that we can calculate these slopes. Now the formula again is y2 minus y1. So my y2 I'm going to say is 52.55 minus y1 is 50. And then the x2 would be 0.5 minus x1 would be 0. And so that is going to give us a positive value of 5.1. And what that indicates is that is the average velocity for the first half of a second in meters per second. And then we'll go ahead and create the rest of the table, again using the calculator, just plugging in like we did before. And I'm going to do one more just for demonstration purposes, and then I'll jump ahead and show you the entire chart. So the next interval would be uh, 50.2 minus 52.55, and then the x2, that would be 1 minus 0.5. And really, it shouldn't be a surprise that we get a negative value this time. What that indicates is that the uh, object is traveling in a downward direction. So if the object is going up, you've got positive velocity, but then if it's going down, you've got negative velocity. If you're thinking about an automobile, it might be going in drive, going forward is positive velocity, putting it in reverse would be negative velocity. Here the positive or negative slope simply indicates the direction of travel. And let's go ahead and finish this chart and then I'll jump ahead. So now that we have our chart finished, I want to uh, draw your attention to the fact that these values for slope are increasing. They're getting bigger negative. And the reason for that is because, well, the uh, acceleration due to gravity. You see the velocity is going to increase due to acceleration. Now what we can do is we can find the instantaneous velocity at any point if we look at the slope of the secant lines and do an estimation. Now I got to tell you the point that I'm most interested in, if I could zoom in here, is this maximum height. Uh, if I pull up my ruler and sketch a graph of what I think that that tangent line is going to look like there, doesn't it look like that that tangent line at the very top point there on the graph is going to have a slope of zero? It looks like that should be horizontal. And so what we can do is, to estimate that, we can look at the average of the slopes of the secant lines on either side of that point. If I could draw those in, this secant line here has a positive slope, and this secant line here has a negative slope. We know that the slope to the left is 5.1, and the slope to the right is negative 4.7, okay? So to find the average slope, to find an average, what you do is you add the two values and divide by two. So this is how we're going to estimate the slope of the tangent 
And again, using my Casio, 5.1 plus a negative basically is minus 4.7 divided by 1 is 0 0.4, which is approximately 0. Remember, this is a rough estimate because I would have to get closer points to get a better estimate. Okay, that's one way that we can estimate the slope of the tangent at this point. Another way we can do that is we can look at the slope of the secant line that goes through the points on either side of our point in question. Here, you see this green line would be the secant of the points that are on either side of our point that we're concerned with. And if I find the slope of that line, that's going to approximate the slope of my tangent line also. So let's do that calculation and see what our estimated slope of the tangent is. So what I can do is I can find the slope of the secant line containing the points on either side of that point. Plugging into the slope formula again, that's going to be 0.2 over 1, which is 0.2, which again is really close to 0. Remember, this is an approximation of the slope of the tangent. If we want to get an even better approximation, what we would need to do is come over here to the graph, and we would need to find points that are closer to our point in question. And as we get closer and closer and closer to the point we're concerned with, we're going to get a better and better and better approximation for the slope of that tangent line. And I think that's going to about wrap it up for this particular lesson. So if you have any questions or comments about anything that I've covered in this video, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.